Hello, I'm Armin Butish. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, your sewer rates are going up. But are there ways to dilute the pain? Find out. Then, if you knew then what you know now, would you be in better shape? We'll attempt to time travel to improve your health. The workplace now includes four generations. How can they all get along? Plus, the latest and greatest ways to make you smile. And we'll reveal a little-known program designed to make sure you can keep your house. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. The news has been leaked. Water bills are going up. While this might put some of us in hot water, for others, the rates will actually go down, and that's cool news. Jennifer Demerley is here to explain all the ins and outs of these ups and downs. Jennifer's with the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. Thanks for joining us, Jennifer. Thank you. First, why are rates going up? Well, there's probably three main reasons why our rates are going up. Uh, probably the most important reason is that we just signed a federal court order with the federal government, the EPA, which is mandating us to eliminate the amount of overflows into the lakes and rivers. And currently we have four and a half billion gallons of overflow into the lakes and rivers and they want us to reduce that to over, uh, just under a half a billion. Okay. So in order to do that, while it's a very important commitment of ours, it's going to cost money and it's going to cost about three billion dollars over the next 25 years. So we need to start uh, increasing our rates and, and raising money in order to implement that program. And also, I understand part of the rate increase goes to just operating increases, just that sort of thing. General operating expenses to operate and maintain the plants. Um, just like everybody else, we're faced with increased costs in fuel, natural gas, and our chemical costs as well. How much of an increase are we talking about for most people? Beginning January 1 of next year, we're looking at an average increase of about 13%, which is wow, about $14 per quarter. Yeah. But there are some that will actually not get an increase but will get a decrease. How's that? That's correct, yes. Currently we have a minimum charge which means that we charge um, users an average of uh, one MCF or a thousand cubic feet of water used. And so regardless of if the amount of water that you use is less than that, we're going to charge you for that thousand cubic feet of water. So you have those older uh, citizens, um, those who move to the south during the winter months, they probably use less than that minimum charge. So we're going to eliminate that charge. They'll get billed based on their actual usage, and therefore their bill will actually decrease by about $10 per quarter. So for people who use less water, they may see a, a decrease in their costs. That's correct. All right, and there are actually some programs to help people out even if they would otherwise have an increase. Tell us about the Homestead program first. Okay, sure. Uh, our Homestead program is for those who are 65 years and older, who are totally or partially disabled and have a household income of less than 30385 right. And that current discount is 33% off their rate, uh, we're going to increase that discount to 40% for those oh, individuals. Mm -hmm. And do people have to contact uh, the Northeast Ohio uh, district to yes. get that changed? Well, uh, no, or the, discount is, the, the discount is automatic, right? To qualify for the program, they do have to contact us and apply every year for the program. Okay, and then there's a new program called the Wastewater Affordability Program. Tell us about that. Yes, that's a new program that we have. For those people who aren't eligible for the Homestead Program, they can apply for the Wastewater Affordability Program. That's for any aged individual who meet the 175% poverty level income requirements. Which is about 25,000 or so? So for a family of two, it's around 25,000, yes. And they will see the same discount that the people on the Homestead program 40%. Mm -hmm. All right, and then there's another one, the Crisis Voucher Program, what's that? The Crisis Voucher Program is for those individuals who have a crisis situation like a job loss or high medical expenses. We're gonna um, put a hold on their account so that their water isn't shut off. And we will put them on a 12 month payment plan and we'll pay their bill up to six months or 300 dollars, whichever is greater. Great. All very important information. Thank you so much. Thank you. When it comes to your sewer rates, what goes up might come down. To find out more about the rate increases and these affordability programs, to find out if you can qualify, use the information that's coming up next. My thanks to Jennifer Demerley. To find out more, 
Call the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District at 216-881-8247 or log on to www.neorsd.org. Next, how a 25% effort can make you feel 100% better. But first, the king of suspense, film director Alfred Hitchcock, believed you could never know too much when it came to mastering his craft. So he opted to redo one of his famous flicks. Do you know which one had a double take? We'll roll out the answer when we return. We're Gateway Title, keeping life simple. We can make it simple. We've got everything you need. See how easy selling your home can be. We're Gateway Title. We're keeping life simple. We won't keep you in suspense. Alfred Hitchcock made The Man Who Knew Too Much in 1934 with Leslie Banks and Edna Best. He then did a second take in 1956 with James Stewart and Doris Day, giving us double the pleasure. What if you could peek 20 years into the future? Imagine what you'll look like and what will you be doing? Is your future self active and healthy or sedentary and weak? Dr. Abood is here to take us back to the future and help us achieve the healthy life we imagine for ourselves. Dr. Abood is with the Solon Spine and Wellness Center. Thanks for joining us, doctor. Thanks. So is it really possible, first of all, to see today how we'll look and feel in the future? The technology's not there yet, but I think you as any parent would know if you could tell your children, if you don't change things, here's what's going to happen five, 10, or 15 years down the road. So, so we can look at things like if you smoke or if you're overweight, uh, that sort of dictates what might be in the future. Right. The author Stephen Covey, he wrote the book Seven Habits of Successful People, states this. He says, begin any project with the end in mind. And what he means, like if you're going to build a house, imagine what will that house look like at the end? What do I want it to do? And then kind of work backward from there. Do I have enough money? Do I, who do I hire to, f to handle it? And we can do the same thing with our health. What do I want to be doing in five years, 10 years, or 15 years from now? And what do I need to do today to make sure I can do that? And you said the technology is not there to look into the future, but on that TV show, The Big Loser, mm -hmm. don't they actually have like a computer that projects what you'll, you're, you would look like? They do, and if you ever get a chance to watch it, it's an impactful show because it shows people hardcore facts. You'll be dead in five years if you don't change the patterns that you have now. And I think if we all took that approach to say, here's what it looks like in the end, then I think we would make better choices each day along the way. Now, you know, I can't picture myself 20 minutes from now, let alone 20 <laughs> years, but, you know, when we stay on the couch and click, click, click all the day, I mean, that dictates something. We can change our futures by being more active, I assume that's key. You're so right, and I've been in practice for 27 years, and I don't need that technology. I can tell a patient pretty much, if you don't stop smoking, here's some common things that will happen. But think about what your life would be like if you, even if you cut down on the cigarettes 50%, or you began to eat fruits and vegetables as opposed to junk food 50% of the time, how would that make your relationships better? Would that make your energy levels better? Would you be able to participate in, in social activities and sporting activities that you just take for granted right now. And, and movement, you've, you've talked about the importance of just basic movement on our show before and, mm -hmm. and how that can change your future. Right, and we are always encouraging our patients, what if you just got up and exercised for 15 minutes a day? That could be a walk, it could be range of motion exercises. You can even do some of these things out of your chair if you're sedentary. One of the things that prevents people from doing things is when they start to get back pain. I mean, that's one of the big problems that people mm -hmm. have, and that then causes them to get overweight and other things if they're not active. So let's focus on the back pain. What can we do? 
and movement again is so important but so often it comes to a point where movement just isn't going to solve the problem the problem is so bad and as we've spoken on the show before is it non-surgical lumbar decompression that's the specialty that we work with and it's a non-surgical technique and we have an 80 percent success rate in helping people with disc ruptures herniations spinal stenosis sciatica it's been really an exciting uh, technology that's come about it's so important that we keep active, that we do the things we have to do so that uh, 20 years from now we can still be around talking and watching Golden Opportunities. You're right. That's a good plan. <laughs> Dr. Boot, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. So you know the expression, if only I had known. Well, now you do know. To be active later in life, you have to start early, like right now. And if back pain is holding you back, start by calling Dr. Abood. His number's up next. For more information, call the Solon Spine and Wellness Center at 440-248-5070 or click to www.solonbackpain.com. Next, is there a generation gap in the workplace? Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. The Kent State University Fashion Museum has fashioned a showing of new and noteworthy acquisitions, which are on display now through early October. Items range from an 1830s elegant dressing gown to a spacesuit worn by an International Space Station astronaut. To address your need for information, call 330-672-3450 or see what's in style at www.kent.edu slash museum. 20-somethings are working with 60-somethings. A 50-year-old could have a 30-year-old as a boss. Is 20th century wisdom valued in the workplace or is this just a time for 21st century technology? We've hired Ann Otto to help us work through these questions. Ann's the owner of the Otto HR Group. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate that. Uh, let's punch the time clock and get to work. Is it unusual to have four different generations working together? No, actually this has happened a lot through history. What's different today is that we're aware of that and we're kind of learning from it. Um, we've learned, for instance, that um, the generations that are closest together tend to have the most conflicts. That's why we have teenagers and parents with the kind of relationships they do. Uh, women have just started entering the workforce in the last generation in a great number, which means that we can have like a young fellow supervising a more mature woman. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean, mean that they can't get along well, it just means that it's more challenging and we haven't had that experience before. Each generation has certain characteristics, if you will. Let's start uh, with uh, the traditionalists. Okay. Uh, it's important to remember, though, that a generation is really a group of people who were born in the same 20-year period and had okay. similar experiences. Um, traditionalists, to begin with, were born between 1925 and uh, 1945, and they're the children of the Depression. And their life experiences pretty much and their values come from World War II. Mm -hmm. They're very hardworking, they, um, they like control, they don't deal real well with change, they, um, they love respect, um, and they're, they're very uh, conforming. Uh, they value order and a chain of command. They want somebody to be in charge. Um, and they really value our institutions. All right, now the next generation, I know something about that, <laughs> that's me, that's the baby boomers. Tell us about us. Yeah, yeah, that's me too. Uh, and we were born between 1946 and 1964. And um, we are optimistic. Um, we came with the post-war uh, post economic boom. Um, we tend to like to uh, be in a team, we like consensus. Um, our parents have told us that long hours equal uh, good work ethic. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we look for promotions, we like to be rewarded uh, financially. Um, we tend to be a little bit better with change um, mm -hmm. because we we think we have seen a lot of change in our lifetime and, and we challenge authority sometimes and actually a lot of the changes in our institutions were instigated by us. That's true. Okay, next, Generation X. What's that? Well, that's our kids. <laughs> and they were born between uh, 1965 and 1981. 
And um, they're really uh, the first time women really entered the workforce in great, in great numbers. Uh, it's the latchkey generation. Um, unfortunately, they saw a lot of downsizing with their parents. Uh, they value portable jobs and portable uh, skill sets because, you know, they've to we're told that they probably won't be do as well as their parents, and that's probably the first generation that that's been the case. Okay. Um, they don't vote as much. Uh, they don't tend to get involved. Um, they are the first folks to really have computers um, for their whole life. Um, they like constant uh, information, feedback from people. Um, and then there's the last generation, which is... The millenniums? Yes, yes. The millenniums are born between 1982 and 2002, and they're children of the 9 11, uh, post, uh, uh, post 9 11, and they really understand the new economic reality. And, um, and they're the ones that did all the tech. Oh, they do, they do. And, and we, we complain that, they're, uh, that they have a short attention span and that, um, that they really don't have as good face-to-face -face communication skills that they've developed. Can all these four groups work together? Sure they can, if we remember some, some certain things. We don't want to stereotype and put people into a box. Uh, okay. We also want to remember that we all see the world differently. And um, we learned a lot through diversity training in the last uh, you know, few years. So we don't want to stereotype. Uh, we want to take time to learn about other people, seek other people out, uh, and, and include them. And it's very important to keep an open ear and an open mind. You can learn from, from one or the other group all the time. Exactly. And Thank we you, got Anne. okay. Appreciate it very much. All right, so it's a whole new world and old world at the same time in the workplace. And while it may take work to understand how to work together, the payoffs for each generation are just priceless. My thanks to Ann Otto for her work well done. To learn more, call the Auto HR Group at 330-633-1265 or visit their website www.theautohrgroup.com. Next, a model smile. It's time to get up and go. An exercise minute on golden opportunities. Hi, I'm Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness, and today we're going to do butterflies. You ready to go, Armand? I think so. Let's go. We got dumbbells in our hands. We're going to lay flat back on the mat. Excellent. Now we're going to have our arms straight up in the air above our chest here. Hold the dumbbells together with your arms slightly bent. Open at the chest. Let them drop down to the ground and close again. Never bend your arms. Your arms should stay straight the entire exercise. Beautiful. Two to three sets, eight to 15 repetitions is what you're gonna wanna do. You can use soup cans, right? You can use soup cans. What about soup toilet can? rolls, toilet uh, paper? No, that's not enough resistance <laughs> for us. But. That's what I like to use. <laughs> you're doing great. Just make sure you keep your arms stiff and your neck down. All right, everybody, now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, please send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 23240 Chagrin Boulevard, Suite 450, Beachwood, Ohio, 44122. For the latest in fashion, we look to the runways of Milan, Paris, and New York to see what the trends are. But to bring you the cutting age of dental designs, dentist Steve Marsh looks to the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. Steve recently saw models of the best and best looking options for your teeth. And he's here to tell us how we can put our best foot forward, I mean smile forward, right now. Thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure, Armin. So Steve, as we uh, age-defying baby boomers grow older, I bet that cosmetic dentistry becomes more and more important. It, it has become more important. It's interesting, this AACD group that you just talked about, when I started going 15, 20 years ago, there'd be a couple hundred dentists. That was when cosmetic dentistry was first starting, about 25 years ago. And now there are thousands of dentists who all met in Boston just a month ago. And tell us about the latest uh, trends. Well, you know, it's interesting. Every time I go, there's different things that come up. You would think things stay static, but with changes in techniques and materials, things have changed a lot. Three major trends. One has to do with the timing that people people do. Some people want to do things quickly, some want to do it in stages. Staging has become very big. Uh, conservative treatments are very big today. We used to do a little bit of wholesale changes. Now sometimes we uh, maintain more tooth structure, which is wonderful for the patient. And, uh, and communication between the dentist and the patient is much better than it's ever been. Always important. So let's start with improvements in the timing. 
Uh, what more can you tell us about that? Well, I have some patients, and, and Dennis here will have patients who come in and say, listen, I don't have a lot of time. I work here. I don't have much time to devote to this. Can you do it in two appointments? And many times that's what we do. The other thing that changed it has to do with uh, staging. Whether it's finances or, again, maybe people don't have enough time, uh, people will want to do things in stages, and dentists now are accommodating them. This is a patient who came to me, and you can see over the years her teeth had drifted. And the, the reason I want to show this before and middle is that you can see that she came in with teeth that were very rotated. Mm -hmm. We did upper porcelain veneers, beautifully done in white, I would say, by our laboratory in combination with our design. At that point, we hadn't done anything with her lower teeth. She also wanted to maximize her insurance. And again, this is a close-up of those upper front teeth. And later on, we came back and did her lower teeth to give her a beautiful view. Um, but again, she wanted to do it over time, and that's what we did. In fact, over two years' time. That sounds great. All right, let's go to conservative treatments that you mentioned. How does that work? Well, recently we had a guest on, and we talked about these uh, minimal preparation veneers. In the old days when we did veneers, we did a lot of tooth reshaping. Today, veneers are stronger. Um, uh, they're very thin, almost like a contact lens. They retain their color even better. So we don't have to do as much tooth reduction, and we have some pictures to show you that as well. That'd be good. Well, let's see if we get the picture. There we go. And there's one. Uh, a patient who's actually in our viewing audience, and um, her story was that a uh, grandchild said to her, Grandma, your teeth don't look so good. They've rotated. Um, she also is out in the public. She does a lot of volunteer work in the, in the city of Cleveland, fairly well known. And she came to me and said, I want to do something, but I've heard about these new porcelain veneers that don't require much preparation. So I designed this with my laboratory, and we did a little reshaping. She didn't even actually have to have uh, temporaries. And this is actually a, a picture of the patient we had on last time, Armand, mm -hmm. where we did these minimal preparation veneers. Her teeth were pushed in. So rather than do a lot of changes, we were able to add these very thin porcelain veneers that look beautiful. Um, and here's somebody who said to me, listen, I don't want to get into the veneers. Can I do something with bonding? I have these spaces. And very quickly, we did that work with, uh, with just bonding in one appointment about an hour and a half's time. That's great. And uh, uh, you mentioned better communication. Maybe we can communicate more about that in, uh, in another yeah. show. And, very, and, and I'm glad to do that. But real briefly, we do a lot of prototypes, as I have here on the table, so that the patient knows what they can expect. Your last uh, guest talked about how computer imaging has helped. And we have that same capability in dentistry today. That's great. Steve, always great. Thank you for bringing us the latest developments. It's my pleasure, Armand. Even if you can't make it to Milan for high fashion, you can make it to Dr. Marsh for the latest in dental design. To find out more, contact trendsetter Steve Marsh. His number's next. See what Dr. Stephen Marsh can do for your smile by calling 440-461-1003 or visit www.clevelandsmiles.com. Next, don't lose your home in tough economic times. Welcome to Bridge Attention Care located in historic Willoughby, Ohio. Whether it's a luxury apartment, a spacious ranch home, or newly built brownstones, it's all here. With the added security of knowing more care is available when you need it. Breckenridge Village offers an exciting and upbeat lifestyle. And the food is fabulous. And our staff makes you their number one priority. Learn more about Breckenridge Village and come see our new Veal Wellness and Aquatic Center. Need a number, want a website? If you missed any from today's guest, get a pen and paper because we're going to list all that information again right now and then I'll be back to tell you how to keep your home sweet home. Are you having trouble making your mortgage payments? Maybe an unexpected illness or injury struck? 
and your medical bills are overwhelming your ability to pay your mortgage, or maybe your income dropped since you originally took out the loan. If you're having trouble paying your mortgage, listen closely. Uncle Sam may be willing to help you out. Here to re reveal a valuable but little known program is my law partner, Mike Solomon. Mike, thanks for joining us. Tell us about the Home Affordable Modification Program. Well, this program is designed uh, for some people to reduce their mortgage payments, and it could be a huge drop. Some, some people have had their mortgage payments drop by $1,000 wow. a month. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. So who's eligible for it? Well, first of all, you ha it has to be your primary residence. Number two, the mortgage must come out prior to 2009. The monthly payments you're making on your mortgage must be more than 31% of your gross income. The mortgage that you have has to be less than $729,750. And then if you get this a modification, you have to be able to make the modification payments, obviously. And then finally, mm -hmm. you, you can't have been convicted of a, a crime involving real estate over the last 10 years. Well, I think a lot of our viewers will, will uh, be able to be eligible. So if you qualify, then what do you get? Well, here's what happens. If you qualify for the program, then your payments are reduced to 31% of your gross income. So for example, let's say you're getting Social Security of, and, and retirement benefits of $1,800. Then your monthly payments could be reduced to $558, even if you're making much higher payments normally under the mortgage. All right. There's another program, the Home Affordable Refinance Program. What's that? Well, basically, that program allows you to refinance your home. You know, with interest rates dropping, many people want to refinance at a lower rate. The trouble is their houses have dropped in value, so they can't refinance. This federal government program will help them refinance, qualify for lower payments. All right. You, we've probably lost a few of our viewers. Where can they get more information about these programs? Well, the government has a good website. It's www.makinghomeaffordable.gov, and they can get that, and they'll have all the information they need on it. That's great. Makinghomeaffordable.gov. Yes. This is, these are great programs, and I don't think too many people know about no, it. Thank right. you, Mike. You're welcome. All right. Are you struggling to make ends meet? Uncle Sam may have a program to help. For more information, give Mike Solomon a call. His number's up next. Call Butish, Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information. Or log on to www.butishandsolomon.com. Thanks for joining us. On next week's show, traditional pensions have become passe. So where should you retire your, retire fu your retirement funds? Uh, we'll tell you. Then make a move that is monumental. We'll unpack helpful advice. Plus, see movies on the big screen for a minimum amount of money. We have just the ticket. And has the real estate market really turned the corner? We'll look to see if the grass is really greener. Until then, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. Would you like to join our kitchen conversation? All you have to do is call toll-free 1-877-765-1543 and leave us your question, name, and phone number. Or log on to www.golden.tv for all the latest information and show updates.